Before he was making artsy, four-hour black-and-white superhero films, Zack Snyder was directing people to their deaths in the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Now he's back with a brand new zombie movie that is longer in length and larger in scale. But is it better? That is the question of the day, as Dawn of the Dead goes up against Army of the Dead on Real Rivalries. Snyder is one of my favorite action directors. I love his crazy use of slow motion and unapologetically graphic violence. Dawn of the Dead sees a band of humans breaking into a mall to get away from the zombie threat outside. Army of the Dead has our protagonists run into the zombie horde in order to score that big payday. Different plots, but ultimately the same conclusions. Lots of carnage. Dawn features a suburban hellscape, complete with gun-wielding neighbors, feral children, and lots of homes going up in flames. My favorite is the helicopter shot of the local gas station exploding. Army opens with a montage of pure chaos. No one is winning in Vegas after Patient Zero breaks out of his holding container. Really quite easily too, might I add. We see soldiers dropping into a worst case scenario, shipping containers, crushing folks. Even the local Elvis impersonator can't dance his way out of this one. Both films have your standard dose of undead bites, along with some more creative kills. Dawn of the Dead has sniper rifle minigames like Zombie Chess and Celebrity Deathmatch. Also has the timeless art of chainsaw wielding. There's even a bus parade that ends how all bus parades should. Because parades are stupid. Army of the Dead showcases the destruction of Las Vegas, the slaughter of a convoy, a barbaric vault security system, chopper combat, and a young woman with presumably very little gun training expertly headshotting half a dozen zombies in a row. Her KD ratio is right up there with Leia. What the hell are you doing? Somebody has to save our skins. Questionable aiming skills aside, Army of the Dead brings on the bullet storm and gets the first win. One of the main ingredients in a good zombie flick are the sk- OH MY GOD! Be still my beating heart, Kisper! Why would you do that to me? Just gotta get my bearings. As I was saying, the scares are done through atmosphere, music, tension, or just a cat running across the room accompanied by loud noises for no reason at all. Jeez! It was just a cat. Let's keep moving. What is up with that cat? Is someone throwing it? Dawn of the Dead has some very disturbing visuals, many of which come during the end credits. The fact that these zombies can run just adds further intensity to everything. One of the creepier moments in both films is the zombie baby birth. I'm not even sure how this was accomplished in Army of the Dead. When you consider both the parents weren't ideal candidates to conceive, but whatever. The hallway sequence in Army provides the biggest chills as our team has to quietly maneuver around a hibernating horde. Everything feels a little bit more surreal though, while Don goes for a more natural, realistic approach. The practical effects are the biggest helper here. A CG tiger is cool and all, but it also instantly takes away a lot of the fear factor. Don of the Dead wins this one. If these movies didn't have gallons upon gallons of fake blood being spilled all over the place, they'd have no right existing in the genre. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that, as both revel in their own mess. Unfortunately, some of the images are too graphic to show here, so we have developed a state-of-the-art system that will help us block out some of the more unsavory visuals. You can find our walking dead snacking on humans, taking a hearty bite out of some, or making a full meal out of the encounter. Limbs are lost, jaws are removed, People are broken, blown up, sliced, diced, and impaled. The zombies don't fare any better. They are dismembered, crushed, shot to a million pieces. Oh yeah, and already dead to begin with. Yet, they can somehow carry children. I, d I don't understand. I need to move on. Dawn of the Dead wins. We all know the expression, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas even the zombies. While Dawn of the Dead has a fairly athletic bunch of lifeless corpses, Army takes things even further with two tribes, the Alphas and the Shamblers. 
Alphas are faster, stronger, and smarter, which is a weird thing to say about zombies. The main threat to Zeus, the OG Area 51 escapee. His bride is second in command, and there's also a zombie tiger named Valentine. Having a variety of villains is great. I'm sure the good guys fare just as well, right? Sure. For one of the films. Anna and Michael are the two leads in Dawn of the Dead. Two salt-of-the-earth folks were thrown into an unwinnable scenario. They make rational decisions, work together to solve problems, and are just all-around believable characters we can cheer for. Army of the Dead gives us Scott Ward. A quiet, no-nonsense dude who was thanklessly cast out after saving countless lives. In hindsight, maybe the government didn't turn their back on him for no reason. Maybe it was because they found out he was raising the worst daughter ever birthed ever! His kid Kate almost single-handedly gets most of the team killed off due to her unbelievably stupid choices. When she's not arguing or going against her dad's wishes, She's rolling her eyes, or finding ways to unwittingly screw over the rest of the crew. She is the worst! Let's roll call the rest of the cast quickly. There's Modern Zombie, Proud Father and Mother-to-be, Ving Diamond Dog Rames, House of Hair, Honey Boo Boo, Maybe I had character development in the Snyder Cut, The Greatest Vault Opener in the History of the World, Get to the Choppa, The Super Obvious Double Crossing Tagalong, Scorpion, Private Vasquez, Cosplay, Spirit Airlines Passenger, Lady That Kate Cares About Until the Final Moments of the Film When She Doesn't At All, and of course, The Coyote. A woman that should probably find a better profession, considering most of her clientele dies before she receives payment. It's just not a sustainable job. There are some enjoyable characters in Army of the Dead, but as usual, Kate Ward alone ruins everything. Dawn of the Dead has a much better cast. Even the douchebags in the group mostly redeem themselves. It takes a win here. I was genuinely looking forward to Army of the Dead. That was mainly because Don was so great. The mind-boggling script, awful character decisions, and over-reliance on CG made Don of the Dead look even that much better by comparison. And a very easy winner for me to crown. Now I want to hear from you. Leave a comment with your winner, sink your teeth into that like button if you had a good time, and I'll see you next week for another real rival- OH GOD! WHY?! WHY?! I have to acknowledge how insanely dumb the US military is at the beginning of Army of the Dead. They are told that the payload is incredibly dangerous and to immediately evacuate the site. They treat this news like it's nothing more than a meeting getting rescheduled. That's just one of the many questionable script decisions in this movie.